my shit together. My first ever midweek mini, a shorter midweek episode that I am going to occasionally do when there's a specific short topic I want to talk about. My name is Farah. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as at Farah Knits. And welcome. If this is your first time at Knitting My Shit Together, um, which my subtitle is Where Neurodiversity and Yarn Collide. Um, if this is your first time here, this is not a regular, typical episode. Those come out um, in the middle of the night in between <laughs> Sundays and Mondays, Central Standard Time. Uh, yeah, so you can go look at past episodes or look for the episode coming up this next weekend. Welcome. Okay, so this, um, for my first mini, I wanted to talk about yarn subscriptions. Um, if you've seen me mention on previous podcasts, I just started a subscription. I'm about to get my second month shipment. I do mine through Forest Fiber Arts, um, who the dyer is Nikki, and um, she lives locally. It was important to me to find someone local and other things that we will talk about going forward. So what spurred me on to do today's episode is I was watching the podcast Hand Me My Knitting, episode 25. Sam is the host of that. And one of the things they said, I'm just getting out my show notes here. Um, they've decided they're not necessarily a yarn subscription person, at least not in this season of yarn ownership. Um, they have tried several different kinds and they talked about not necessarily getting all the yarns they like. And nothing they said is wrong. It's their opinion and their personal choice for their lives. However, my motivations for beginning a yarn subscription were a little bit different and I look at it differently. And so I just wanted to offer this up as another perspective and point of view for folks who might be considering a yarn subscription. Which leads me to uh, this disclaimer, which is kind of a privilege check. <laughs> I understand that a yarn subscription is not financially access accessible to everyone, for a variety of reasons, a whole slew of reasons. And so I just want to totally own that I get to do this because I'm privileged in a whole bunch of ways, like being a white upper middle class woman <laughs> to be able to do it. Um, yeah, but everybody comes from different backgrounds and has different intersectionalities and all kinds of factors in their lives that we know nothing about. So I want to start off by saying I get that. And so because I get that, what I, uh, I don't think just saying, hey, I realize this is a privilege on my part is enough. Uh, because what that's saying is, oh, I know it's a privilege for me to be able to get like $30 skeins of yarn every month. And anyway, I'm going to keep talking about those. <laughs> to me, really owning my privilege is about saying, this is a privilege I have. I recognize not everybody has it. And so I am going to offer ideas and alternatives in this mini um, for people who might not be able to do what I'm able to do right now. So yeah, that'll come up at the end. So basically, yeah, I'm going to give lower cost alternatives. I spent time researching and coming up with ideas. And so that will be at the end of this mini. Um, it'll be the last thing I talk about because first I want to talk about my reasons for doing it. So the main reason I did it, what initiated my doing it was um, being able to explore new colors and colorways. I found that for myself, I traditionally will get, I gravitate towards the same colors, grays, blacks, earth, tones, greens, burgundies, oranges, yellows. I gravitate toward those colors. I've been venturing into blues lately, but not a whole bunch. I mean, I did my tassels in Amsterdam shawl, which was blue, but that was a, a I mean, that me picking out that yarn was like, ooh, I like this and kind of taking, going outside my normal color palette is what I'm saying. So as 
a way to challenge myself to knit with different colors and see what they do. I thought, man, a subscription box would be awesome because then the designer gets to pick the colors. I don't know what's going to show up and it's going to force me out of my comfort zone color wise. And it totally has. <laughs> that has happened already in my first month. So I'm just going to show you. Um, this is the May color of the month from my Forest Fiber Art subscription box. And it's really lovely. I showed it in one of my previous normal episodes. And I'm just about to put in the marker for my afterthought heel. Um, I'm knitting the Hermione's Everyday Socks. And you can't, they're just lovely. It's just gorgeous. I love how it's knitting up. But this is how I've already learned something. When this game first came and I saw it, like the yellows, brownie yellows in it are a color I would gravitate to. The minty greens and pinks in it, though, were not colors I would gravitate to normally. Like, they just aren't. Mint green isn't one of my things, even though I just got like three skeins of matcha latte from Muse 2320 fiber, but normally they're not. And matcha latte color isn't like a mint green to me. But anyway, so when I took, when I saw the skein, I was like, oh wow. And when I tr imagined in my head what this would look like knit up, I kind of imagined like big swaths and pools of like pink and mint, mint green. And that is not what's happening at all. <laughs> As you can see, it is just all so much more subtle than that. And it's beautiful. And if I were to see somebody knitting up this sock without seeing the skein beforehand, I would be like, ooh, what's that yarn? I want that. But then if I saw the skein on a shelf, I would completely pass it by. So already it's showing me like how a yarn, how colors are gonna knit up is so very different from what it looks like in a skein or a cake. And that's really exciting to me and really fun. And I'm really glad I got to learn that already the first month. So it'll be interesting to see what other months will do. And I think too, it, getting new colors, the one that you're not expecting every month, it's going to force you to brainstorm how to use yarns in a way you might not think of. So Sam from Hand Me My Knitting shared that one month, one of the skeins they got um, was all these neons. It was like yellow, bright neon green, like basically all the neon highlighter colors in a skein of yarn. And I agree that is nothing I would ever pick off a shelf, ever. And they were really frustrated because they are like, oh, I just don't like any of these colors. I get that. But what I thought right away is, you know what would work? What I would do if that skein showed up one month. So Nikki, if you want to go all neon, go for it. I have strategy planned. But what I thought is if a whole bunch of colors come that just seem way overwhelming to me, First off, I'm going to knit a little swatch every month to see how it's going to knit up. But for that, I thought, man, what if that was done with like a gray or a black in a brioche cowl? The gray and black in the brioche would completely mute and tone down some of the bright neons and make them pop. And if you wore it so that if you wore the cowl on the side where the black or charcoal gray was the prominent color, those would really, it would just be really cool, actually, I think. I think that could look really interesting. I'm almost tempted to like reach out to her and be like, I will buy that skein of yarn from you and try knitting one and see what happens. It's tempting. Okay, so that's another thing to think about. You have to, if a, a skein comes that's completely not your color, you get this creative challenge of figuring out, okay, what can I do with this that will make me love it? or somebody else love it. I don't know. Okay, so playing with color is number one why I decided to do a subscription. Number two was to support small hand dyers. So for me, my understanding was, hey, if you're a hand dyer, like all of your yarn has to sell. You want it to be selling, obviously. If you're a small hand dyer, especially, and having 
people who are subscribing every month gives you financial room to play around and be creative. Because let's say you had 20 subscriptions every month. You would know with these 20 skeins of yarn, I can play and explore and I know they're going to sell. So I don't have to just stick to dyeing what I know will sell, which you need to do to be financially stable as a business, but you get room to be creative and explore. And I wanted to support an artist's ability to do that financially. So that's another motivating factor for me doing a subscription box. To that end, so I I messaged Nikki that idea and I asked her if I could share this and she said yes, um, that I could share what she quoted me. And so this is what she said to me. I said, am I thinking about this right? Does this really do that? Because again, I'm not a hand dyer. And she responded with this. I'm not a large company. So she said, yes, it's exactly that. I'm not a large company and every bit of inventory that sits on the shelves is an expense that's difficult to justify financially. So the yarn clubs certainly help balance that out. And like you said, provide freedom of expression that is so refreshing and rejuvenating. And so that made me happy that I'm getting to support her creativity in that way. And I get cool, fun skeins of yarn that I get to play around with. To that end though, that idea is part of what I factored in when choosing a dyer to go with for a yarn subscription box. Like I know Knit Picks does yarn subscription box. So Hedgehog Fibers does one. Um, a lot of big companies, but you know, bigger indie dyers do them or bigger even commercial dyers do them. And I guess like hedgehog fibers, beautiful yarn. I've never knit with it, but I've certainly been tempted by skeins and will get one, I'm sure, one day and knit it up and love it. But they're not a small indie dyer. Um, like they don't need my financial backing with a subscription to be able to explore creatively. I don't know their entire financial story, but I would guess they have way more financial space to play around than like Nikki does, who's a smaller hand dyer. So that was one thing I factored in. The other thing I factored in and who I chose was what was important to me. So like for me, I wanted to pick someone local and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so, um, Nikki lives in a town on the north side of the Twin Cities metro area, so she's local to me, and that was important to me. Um, I also, and for people who are like, so for me, getting yarn that I'm guaranteed to like every single skein, love the colors, wasn't a priority for me, personally. Instead, what I would encourage you to do is... <clears throat> look at the dyer's work and if you're loving everything they're doing so Nikki when I go to her website forestfiberarts.com I want to buy like almost every single skein of yarn that's on her in her shop so I knew okay I like this dyer even though she sometimes does stuff with colors that I typically wouldn't choose and a lot she does with stuff I would choose I knew that I could trust her in a way, like, okay, I'm picking up what she's putting down. I can invest here and know that it's going to be fun and a journey. So that's how I looked at it. It would also be a good way to um, support dyers who might have various intersectional identities that are underrepresented and marginalized in the knitting community um, is another way you can use a subscription service to be able to support their creativity and um, give them the financial freedom to be creative if they're a small hand dyer. So yeah, <coughs> that is why I decided to do a yarn club. I'm glad I did. And I'm having fun already a month in. Like, I'm, I've knit this in two days because it was just, un, I mean, I'm only almost to the heel on the first sock, which I guess isn't epic, but I'm working on other things as well. 
but I love everything about this. And so I'm going to get this great fun pair of socks that I normally would never have gotten because I wouldn't have picked this color. And so it'll be interesting to see what shows up for June's club. We'll see. Well, you'll get to see if you subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will show it there. And I'm thinking of doing like when I first get them in the mail, opening them on my Instagram um, stories, like doing it live and having it and I'll save it. I'll make a highlight for yarn club opening and reveals um, on my highlights if I'm able to. Yeah. Check it out. You can follow me on Instagram at Farinitz. Okay. Now to the last part, which has to do with budget and financial accessibility. So here are ideas that I um, had for if budget is a barrier to you for subscribing, but you still want the experience. A couple things. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know what's going on. One is that a lot of indie dyers will do like, I know Stitch Together does, I know, um, Nikki does with Forest Fiber Arts and there's several dyers who you can just buy one month of like mystery yarn and a mystery package because for me the surprise of what it's going to be is part of the fun. It might not be for everybody but for me it is. If that is for you as well rather than maybe you can't subscribe monthly but maybe you could save up and quarterly buy a mystery skein from one of those dyers um, and get a package or, you know, say, okay, I'm going to sign up for the August yarn club because you can just do one month at a time. That's one way to do that. Also, the idea, other ideas I had were, so that would be if you want to get a surprise box from an indie dyer and you can save up over a couple of months and do it like quarterly or every other month or whatever works for your budget. The other thing is at Michaels and Joanne, which those are in North America, I believe. So for people outside of North America, whatever the equivalent of like the kind of crafty box store would be. But here in North America, Michaels and Joanne, they put out a 40 to 50% coupon for one item every week. I think a new coupon comes out. And I went to the websites and looked and I know because I've picked up yarn there. With that coupon, you could get a skein of fingering weight yarn for within the five to ten dollar range. And what you could do is just challenge yourself to okay, go pick a color I would never normally pick and have fun with that. If you want it to be a surprise, I thought when you have a yarny friend going to one, send them with the money and coupon and have them do it. The other thing you could do is find a friend on Ravelry, like PayPal them money, your money, or Venmo them your like 10 bucks or whatever, and say, hey, get the Michaels or Joanne coupon, go pick me out a skein of fingering weight and mail it to me. And then it would be totally, uh, you would get the surprise element on a budget. So that's another idea. The other idea, and you could do this either way, where you pick it out or have somebody else pick it out for you, would be on webs, which is at www.yarn.com. They have both a grandpa's garage sale section of their website and a closeout section of their website. And I went and looked and there are skeins within the five to $10 range as well of um, sock yarn. Of, you know, you'd get to pick your weight then too. So those are some ideas. The final idea I had, and this could be interesting, is if you go to Knit Picks, and I'll put the website here, they sell bear yarns that are undyed. And one thing you could do is make your own um, hand dyed skein using food coloring, which is relatively inexpensive. So this is a little bit more, it's out of the five to $10 range. Um, I think the bare skein of fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks was $10 and then you'd have to get shipping and then get the food coloring. So we're maybe looking at 15 to 17 bucks, I think. But um, there's tutorials all over on how to dye yarn with food coloring. I'll put a link in the notes for this mini um, in the description box below. Yeah, and so those are ways you could deal with um, budget issues and get around them and still enjoy surprise yarn 
and some even from indie hand dyers and have that experience. So yeah, that's it for this mini. I'm at 20 minutes, so I'm not my normal length, which is good. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you subscribe, um, you will get notified of my minis whenever I do them because it's not going to be every week necessarily. I don't know how often it's going to be. We'll see. But if you subscribe, you'll get notified when a mini comes out and obviously when my regular episodes come out on the weekend. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you on the episode this weekend. Thanks. Bye.